Hi everyone, Jacqueline here creating my garden and today we're going to talk about everything lemon cypress. So every year, a couple months before Christmas, the lemon cypress tree called Gold Crest Monterey Cypress or Cuprus Macrocarpia Gold Crest, which is also known by another name of Hesper Cypress Macrocarpia, show up in all the florist shop and retail stores along with the poinsettias. This is a conifer that is native to North America and can reach anywhere from 10 feet high and 2 feet wide. In ideal conditions, it's not unheard of for this conifer to reach up to even 30 feet tall. These trees are only hardy in zones 7 to 10. This conifer is a favorite in the landscape due to its beautiful chartreuse green color and the fact that if you brush up against this tree or you squeeze one of the branches, it will exude a lemon scent, which is really lovely. For the rest of us that do not live in the zones 7 to 10, these conifers are considered a house plant and can be utilized in the garden and then brought inside for the winter. Most of the lemon cypress that are sold around Christmas are of a dwarf variety that will not get any taller than three feet high. Therefore, these can be used easily as a house plant and maintained inside from year to year. It can be put out in the garden during the summer months after all danger of frost. They make a great centerpiece for containers in a garden. As a house plant, these have very specific needs such as they require eight to ten hours of direct sunlight a day. They prefer a room with a temperature of around 60 degrees Fahrenheit or 15 to 16 degrees Celsius. And one of the key things with this plant is they prefer to have some humidity. Spritzing them regularly helps to prevent the branches from turning brown, drying out. Once these branches turn brown, they become brittle and there is no way of saving this plant. They are a goner. So when you receive one of these plants at Christmas, because this is the only time of year they show up in the stores, the first thing you want to do is you want to get it out of this plastic pot because they will dry out fast in this pot and move it to another pot. I have a clay pot here that's a little bit bigger than the actual pot that it's in and we're going to move it to that pot. Because this plant is not picky about the soil, I'm going to use a miracle Grow moisture control soil that's supposed to be reduced in gnats and pot this up. To save time, I've already moved my soil into a container and added some perlite to it because it needed more perlite to provide oxygen and good soil drainage. So the first thing we're going to do with regard to this and how I like to do this because this Terracotta pot has a significant hole in it. So rather than having to put a coffee filter or a piece of clay or something over that hole, we're just gonna take this entire plant out and I'm just gonna use this container to show you. And we're gonna pull it out and you can see how dry this plant is when you first get it from the store. And I'm gonna instantly move it to the clay pot and put it right to the bottom so that it can absorb the moisture immediately right from the roots. That also prevents the dirt from draining out of this pot onto the saucer. So that's why I say you don't need a coffee filter or a piece of clay or something to cover that hole because the roots will do that for you. We're then gonna come through here and I'm only going up one size in pot and we're gonna backfill with the soil around this. Now I have not added any nutrients to this soil, but I will add fertilizer to it sparingly. For now, we just wanna pot this plant up. You can see after it being potted up, there's little soil falling into the saucer because the roots are right there at the hole. So you don't have that problem, other than me spilling it, of having a lot of soil come out into the bottom of the saucer. So once you have this pot it up. The next step is to soak it thoroughly. We're going to place this plant into the kitchen sink because this is its first watering since I brought it home and with lukewarm water we're going to gently water the plant. 
we want to settle that soil in now that we pot it up and make sure it gets adequate moisture to hydrate that root ball because it's very, very dry. And if we don't water it, we're going to lose the plant. It'll become brittle and you'll start seeing brown leaves. So I'm just going around and I'm giving it a good drink and letting that water soak in. And with it being a terracotta pot, it will absorb that water very fast and it will drain out. And just making sure that the soil does not run out the sides. So you can see here, it's now dripping off and I'm going to give it a bit more water just to make sure it gets a really good drink until that water is running thoroughly through that root ball and out the drainage hole. The next thing we want to do, once we make sure the soil's all in there really good, is we want to spritz this plant. And this is something you're going to want to do with this plant probably every other day or every two days, depending how warm your home is. These plants like 60 degrees Fahrenheit or 15 to 16 degrees Celsius. I live in the zone 3B where we have very cold winters. So we keep our houses usually in the 70s range. So you want to spritz this every other day to keep it from drying out and becoming brittle. So what I like to do, and because we just got this plant, is I like to take it and put my sprayer on and just give it a good spray. And that will help it have the humidity it needs to thrive. It also is getting more water this way. So that will give it the humidity it needs if we do this every couple days. The other thing is soak in that soil good. So because this was the first watering, I did it in the sink. But ideally, on a daily basis, you can do it in the sink every day, take it out, put it in here, and soak it. Or you can use another trick I like to do, which is using a pie plate or some sort of pan, putting it in the pan, just like this, and fill in the pan with water. Right to the top. And letting it sit in there for a couple hours. You can also let it sit in there overnight because it'll take up what it needs into that pot and into that clay and that will be sufficient to hydrate it. And you probably want to do this if your home is as warm as mine probably every two to three days and you're going to check the soil, soil moisture by looking at the top. If the top couple centimeters is dry you need to water it. Never let this plant dry out like I said or you will lose the plant. Now we have an opportunity here too with fertilizing this plant every month with an all-purpose fertilizer to add it to the water so it can absorb it. To propagate a lemon cypress, the first thing you want to do is you want to disinfect your pruners or snips with some rubbing alcohol. So just wipe down your blades and I believe I cleaned these already, but we're just gonna make sure because we don't want to spread any disease to these conifers. And I just am using a 70% alcohol. It's a no-name brand. You also want to use a good seed starting mix for your propagation. I have added my Jiffy Mix to this container and it's already moistened. It is good and moist because these conifers need a lot of moisture to help them survive. So what we're going to do is I have two tiny little containers here. You can see how small they are in the palm of my hand. They're probably about an inch and a half wide. And we're going to fill each one with some mixture and just push it in there. Just like that. And then we're going to take this, I'm going to move this out of the way. And we're going to take a conifer like this lemon cypress, and we're going to take a couple cuttings off it. And you don't want to take the hardwood. You want to take softwood cuttings. So that means you're cutting, you're taking your snips in these branches just like that. Okay. And you want to remove a whole bunch of the lower branches like this. 
so that it has good depth in the soil. So we're just leaving a little bit of the top. The next thing you want to do is you want to take your rooting hormone, and this is ProMix rooting powder, and just put a little bit in the cap and avoid the big chunks. We'll just push that down just like that. And we are going to moisten the stem of the plant and get that rooting hormone all over it. And here's a tip for you. Because these cuttings tend to be dry, and as you notice when I demoed here, that it was not taking up the rooting hormone, it wasn't sticking to it like I want it to, I'm going to dip it in some water here just to get that stem wet. And then we're going to take it and roll it into that rooting hormone or rooting powder. And you can see now how well that is sticking to that cutting because that is going to be the key for that plant to create roots. We're then going to take our little pot like this and we're going to put a hole with our finger in the center because we don't want that rooting hormone to fall off and we're going to put that plant deep down in the pot in the center and then we're just going to press that soil in to stabilize it. Just like that, we're pushing it in good and make sure it's in the center. So that's good and moist. And then I'm going to come through and I'm going to backfill with some more soil around this. And you can just see, I'm just doing this over the pot because I don't want to drop it all over the place and I'm notorious for doing that. So you can see here, I'm just topping it up with additional soil to make sure it gets adequate moisture and centering it a bit too. And then we're just going to put it under the grow light. So let's do the next one. Let's take another branch off the same plant because it does have some branches that are sticking out. We'll take this one. These plants love a good trim, so don't be afraid to prune them. And that's why they are such a suitable plant for bonsai and for topiary is because they are good with being trimmed regularly. I just dipped it in the water. I'm going to get the rooting hormone all over that root and make our hole in the center of this all the way down. Put it in and I'm all fingers. Hope you guys can see this. And I'm just pushing it down. You can see there's a bit of rooting hormone on the top. But that's okay. And then we'll just add some more soil to the top of it again and firm it in. Because these are small little pots, you're going to have to watch to keep them hydrated and, and spritz them regularly, the same as we do for the large plants. So you're probably going to want to check this every day or every other day and then spritz it every other day to keep it moist while you put this under a grow light or in a window with bright direct light to start the roots. I think it's really cute, even at that size, don't you? So that's really easy to propagate these plants. So now we have two starter plants, and then we have our original plants. If you want to turn one of these little plants into a topiary, it's quite a simple process, but it's pretty much however you like your topiaries to look. But you have to start with determining the form of your topiary, how many balls you want on this topiary, and if you're gonna want a third ball at the top. So three layers, because if you want a third ball at the top, you need to leave a leader at the top to form that next ball. But the first thing you're gonna do is you're gonna come into the center of this plant where you want your first ball to form, and because it's such a small plant, I'm only gonna do two balls, and I'm going to come in here right into the center and find the center of this plant, which is right there. You can see where those branches all meet. 
and I'm going to come through and I'm going to take out some of the center branches. Very carefully, I'm just going to snip them off. We're just going to take those out and we're going to do it bit by bit. And you want to take your time doing this, especially if you're not a pro doing it, because it's so easy to make a mistake with these plants. So just open this up really good. And you want that center to be pretty clean. And like I said, it's anything goes. I am not a pro at doing toperies. I'm going to warn you right now. But I am willing to try my hand at it for you guys and show you how I personally would do it. And you can see there, I have a stem now right in the center. The next thing you want to do is you want to prune it and shape it. So you want that ball, so you want it narrower at the bottom. So we're just going to clean this up and take off a few branches at the bottom. And then as we go up, we're going to make it a bit wider. And then we're going to make it shorter at the top to get that ball form. And I can tell you, this is very relaxing to do this. And we'll just go around the plant and do that. And this is just the start of a topiary here. We have to train this plant to do what we want it to do for shape. So that's why I'm just coming through and shaping this up. And just kind of eyeball it. I mean, this is its first haircut, so it's not going to look gorgeous, but we're just starting the shape of it. And you can see there's a few branches like right here that are sticking out. So we're just going to trim them in and anything that's kind of drooping and sticking out more than the rest. All right. So now we have the top here and I'm going to take off a couple more branches here to extend this. And just, I'm going to even this out a bit. Because this plant is not even in its growth, but it will be. You guys might think I'm butchering it, and maybe I am, but it will come around and we will have a nice shape in the long run. All right, so there it is. I have a few more here. I'm just going to shape that are too tall on the front. And then I'm going to come in here and take some of these extra branches here. And because I don't want a third ball on this, I'm actually going to take off the center here. So now by doing that, I'm just going to give it a little bit of a trim. making it shorter at the bottom, longer in the middle, and then shorter at the top. There we go. And that is the start of our topiary. Really simple, great for your mental health to spend some time pruning your plants, because that's really what you're doing. You're giving it a good prune. And you can see, I took quite a bit off of it. The other nice thing about turning these plants into a topiary is you can see the condition of the inner branches of the plant. So you can see if there's any brittle or dry branches in there, and this one looks really good. So that's another opportunity is to inspect the plant when you do these. And so going forward, to keep its shape as it grows, you're gonna give it a pruning. And once again, you can prune it to whatever shape you desire. I just want basically two puff balls on this. So that is my goal with this plant to keep it simple and then to use it in one of my containers outside. And then I will bring it in again for the winter. And as it grows, 
Once it becomes root bound, I will pot it up to the next size of pot. If you make a mistake creating your topiary and it's your first time, that is okay. Conifers are very forgiving. So all you have to do is let it grow a bit, then reshape it. And keep doing that until you get the shape it wants. The big thing, once again, with these lemon cypress as topiaries, bonsai, or just as a plant in your house is to make sure, once again, they're well hydrated and that you spritz them. You also need to be checking these plants for mealybugs, aphids, and scale. Those are the top three pests that love lemon cypress conifers. So keep an eye on your plants for that. If you keep them spritzed and well watered, that will also help to keep the infestations down. But if you do see that happen, you're going to want to treat it immediately. And you can use anything from a neem oil to an insecticidal soap and spray on the branches regularly until they're gone. You can even squish them with your fingers if you see them on here. It's whatever you prefer to use to treat these plants to keep them healthy. So that's it for this video. Those are the tips I wanted to share with you on how to propagate, maintain, and groom your lemon cypress conifers. I'm sure there are a lot of other tips out there that you can utilize in maintaining your plants, but these are the top ones I feel are necessary to be successful in growing these. And these conifers are great at Christmas because you can decorate them like a little Christmas tree. You can find little ornaments that you can put on them and miniature lights that you can set on them. And they give you that festive feel. In fact, in a prior video, I turned one into a grump tree, which was super easy. And then after Christmas, I just took all the ribbon off of them and the ornament that I had on it and let it go back to its natural form. So thank you for watching this video. Don't forget to give me a like and subscribe and share this on Facebook. And I would love to hear in the comments from you. Bye everybody.